I think every successful writer, artist, uh, performer, musician, even an entrepreneur uh, that has some success, I think they all have stories uh, from like their early days when they thought that it was really hopeless, right? They were maybe were uh, playing to an empty crowd or just found themselves in some sort of ridiculous uh, circumstance. I had one of those kind of stories the other day. So I signed up for a free vendor table at this thing called Third Thursday Art Market. Uh, it's like a monthly event that is part of Allentown Arts Fest. Allentown is a city near me in uh, Pennsylvania. Basically it's an outdoor event that sort of sprawls the streets uh, and some of the alleys and it has uh, live music, lots of different vendors with lots of different art, and it's just a nice kind of chill atmosphere given that it's like right in the middle of the city. This is only the second time I had ever actually uh, gone to a show as an author. So I had my two books for sale, but the real reason I was going was to just try to hand out my promotional materials, which uh, I have a little mini book uh, that has two short stories and then all my links to, you know, Dark Fiction Factory YouTube and the channel, the website, and some double-sided bookmarks, credit to Martin Trafford and my old man Steve Raymer for all the awesome artwork. So I know that trying to be an author is a long process, it's a long game, so I'm not really too concerned with trying to make money right now. So I figured that if I could just get that mini book and get my writing into some people's, new people's hands, uh, that I would take that as a win. So I packed up my little Hyundai Veloster with all my stuff. So my big homemade dark fiction factory poster, uh, which is like splattered with fake blood, was on top of the passenger seat right next to me. So I actually stopped at Dunkin' Donuts on the way there and at the drive-through, the lady stuck her hand out and, and you know gave me the coffee and looked and saw the sign and <laughs> real quickly like got back in and closed the window as if I was like some sort of predator because I had this bloody poster in my car. So as I drove to the show, I really, just was fighting anxiety. I always get like really anxious, really nervous, just flat out kind of just want to bail on any of these sort of like live events. I used to get the exact same way when I was still doing filmmaking and every time there was a film shoot, I would get like sick to my stomach um, before like every single shoot. It's like imagine you're going to work and you were like big regional managers coming in to talk to you and you have no idea if you're getting a promotion or if you're about to be fired. And that's kind of the feeling that I have when I go to these events because you never really know how they're gonna go. Luckily, it wasn't hard to find my vendor spot uh, and there's a parking garage right next door. So that was a huge relief. Uh, it was just like a little modest spot in a city alley. Uh, you know, the buildings were towering over me, you know, right behind me, right across the alley in front of me. But I set up my table, I set up my books, I set up all my promotional materials. And I stepped back and I thought it looked pretty good, except for there was like an odd amount of flies buzzing around that I noticed. Uh, and then the wind just suddenly gusted down that alley and just blew all my shit off the table, blew the sign over, the little pricing stickers from the vendor next to me who was selling art, they were like fluttering past me in midair. <laughs> it's a complete mess. Then I, I like look up in the sky and it's just gray clouds just lingering overhead. So that was a very ominous sign. <laughs> so I stood there for a while, you know, trying to engage, but nobody really came by. So I sat down for a while, but the freaking flies were just buzzing everywhere and they were bothering me. So I had to get up and move around a little bit. The only people I really talked to were the vendors on either side of me. And it became very apparent that the main hub of the show was kind of down like across a street and then like down a little bit. You could faintly hear the live music playing. You could see like way more people, way more foot traffic down there. Uh, and we were kind of in this little offshoot alley. Uh, so we were not in the best spot, but again, it was a free table to set up and vend. So I can't complain about it. So the flies just kept swarming and I realized that I had set my table up right next to a public garbage bin. <laughs> and then I look across the street and I see what I think is like a nuclear sign and a big, letters it says fallout shelter and i'm thinking like for fuck's sakes i'm literally set up between a garbage can and a fallout shelter so i like did one of these i put my head down i looked at the ground and i see a chicken wing on the ground that has been there for so long that it's literally growing like thick white fuzz on it so i sat back in my seat and it was just like you know there's still no no people came by uh, that even stopped or even looked my way. And I just thought like, this is a colossal waste of time. Like this is just, this sucks. And I really tried to think, I was remembering, like I said, all those stories 
you've heard from like successful artists or musicians or whatever comedians and how they had such they have such stories about like such rough shows that they had you know in the early days and they, they look back and laugh at it now and I just try to keep that in mind that's when I saw another vendor actually approach my table so we talked for a little bit he was a really nice uh, young guy collected historical items uh, that pertain to like the local cities and stuff and he bought one of my books so I actually did sell something and then I, you know, I, I started to feel a little bit better and I, I kind of looked up and I noticed that that breeze had died down but all the clouds were gone all those gray clouds were gone and it was just a very soft like a blue blanket just nicely draped over the sky and it was very calm the weather was perfect there were still a lot of flies but what are you gonna do so more and more people came by as the night went on uh, a lot of them just kind of gazing at my blood splattered sign and uh, i could tell the people who were interested in some weird dark shit because they would get that kind of curious smile when they looked over and saw something like with blood on it uh, and i could really tell the people who were not interested because they would immediately look away and like pep up their step real quick <laughs> But I chatted with some really interesting folks who did stop by. I met some other artists. I handed out enough of my mini books that I lost count how many I had given out. So I had at least uh, gotten my stories into the hands of quite a few new people. Uh, so I was really happy about that. So finally the sun, you know, sort of slips down behind the buildings. The show's kind of coming to a close. I packed up my stuff, packed up my car. You know said you know goodbye nice to meet you to the other vendors that were uh, next to me but before I left I looked at that trash bin I looked across the street at the fallout shelter I looked down at that moldy fuzzy chicken wing and I took some pictures so that in the future when I'm a successful writer I can look back and you know laugh at that memory Thank you guys for checking out this video for more content check out darkfictionfactory.com until next time take care